followed the advice of uh, officials and have gone fairly far offshore, at least two, three miles, where they're not going to be affected by this uh, kind of these uh, converging areas of water here. But look at this. I'm going to come over. This is the southern part of the Marina del Rey uh, breakwater right here. And just look at the effect of the water right there. Look how the we've got different areas of water moving different directions. The uh, rippling effect on the water, the churning of the water here. That is really, really well, something we just never get to see. And it just goes to show you the powerful nature of all this stuff that's uh, taking place. And again, most of it happening underwater where we can't really yeah, see, we can't it. Even so see it. I, I uh, want to urge uh, Mr. Twitter over here, Eric Spillman, who's <laughs> been fantastic to join us for the last bit of this broadcast here to go on Twitter and find out because I want to bet that there is somebody sitting in their boat three miles off the, sh the coast of California waiting out the tsunami and they have probably tweeted about it. Oh, and I'm I sure. bet that's the first time that that's probably happened here <laughs> in California. <laughs> waiting out the tsunami three miles off the coast of California. Wow, that it, it I mean, kind of looks like a uh, witch's cauldron uh, here, and and we have to say though that uh, although this is yeah. this is interesting to look at, we haven't had any kind of the damage that they've had in in uh, Northern California, um, where you know there was damage to boats in in some of those places. And that wasn't expected. They they we we were sort of forewarned, if you can, of uh, if you will, of the damage that would incur uh, on Northern California. Again, there's that picture uh, from KTVU. Because um, if if you look at the coastline of California, yeah. the the northern and central parts, sort of north of Point uh, Point Conception, are actually facing towards yeah. Japan. But the coastline turns at and Point Conception, in. and and so we're not getting the direct hit from from the uh, surge of water. Earlier numbers said 18 boats had been damaged and or destroyed, but then later accounts said more of a, a number more closer to 35. Uh, there's, there's a lot of damage in the Santa Cruz Harbor at this point um, and closer to San Francisco, a little further north. But BART obviously is uh, some of the, the tracks of BART go underwater under the bay and they're, they're taking precautions there to make sure that uh, they're being on alert in case water does come into the bay and into uh, the tunnels. So again, all emergency officials uh, across the state, or at least on the coastal part of the state, are are on alert. They're concerned. They're watching the same image, images that we are to make sure that we are aware of what is happening and could happen, uh, and doing the best they can to prepare for the arrival of, of this surge of water. And and again, the the waves in Northern California were were six and a half feet or six feet. Uh, the most, the worst case scenario that we were supposed to get here in Southern California was was three feet uh, or less. And I think when when uh, we were listening to the news conference from the seismologists at Caltech and the U.S. Geological Survey, they were saying that the predictions were 100% accurate. Exactly what the Weather Service and the other scientists said would happen is what is what happened here. Um, and uh, so, in a way, that's kind of comforting because yeah. because in this situation, we got the information in advance. Yeah. Um, and it was accurate. Well, and it's interesting because you talk about in advance. A lot of uh, discussion has been made at, the, at Caltech and the folks that study earthquakes, the scientists that make this their life's work, about the, the, the ability to predict. Can they trust technology to, pre to predict uh, earthquakes? Well, what we have been hearing, initial reports out of Japan say that indeed, yes, they were able to predict the, the, uh, the, the, at least the tsunami um, by about 30, uh, about 30 seconds. Yeah. So, it, 30 seconds seems like no time, but it is enough time to, for, for people to, to get away. And we're watching here some, uh, some county crews uh, doing some shoveling there. I'm not quite sure what it is they're doing, why they're doing that. Uh, maybe that's just regular routine work. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, but <laughs> in any case, we saw the LAPD helicopter flying over the marina there as well, keeping an eye on things. And uh, beautiful day in, in Southern California. Would be a nice day to go for a ride on your boat, but uh, not, but today. For, not today. Maybe not today. tomorrow. Well, and that'll be interesting, too, uh, to see how we've been told that the, the, the effects will be felt for several hours. What is it going to look like this afternoon? What is it going to look like this evening and into tomorrow? Um, that's why KTLA and KTLA.com are, are both great resources for you. We've got, of course, our, our midday show around 1 o'clock. We have another newscast at 6 p.m. And, of course, our evening primetime newscast at 10 p.m. But you can also count on us throughout the day if something should occur. We will break in and bring you the latest information. And if you are mobile or if you're at the office, KTLA.com uh, will be updating the information that we get from uh, all the, the, uh, the officials uh, that are providing us with information and pass it along to you.
Yeah, people think of a tsunami as just one giant surge of water. Yeah, it's not a tidal wave. No. No. It's, it's, it's a cycle of waves mm -hmm. that, that come through. And in Japan, of course, they had, you know, some of, the, some of the tsunami waves there were as high as 10 meters, which is 30 feet. Um, it, but as the, as the force of the, uh, of the tsunami travels across the Pacific Ocean, it loses a lot of energy. And here we are uh, looking at yeah. churning Churn. water, sort That's of whirlpools. It's been the word of the like day, that. churning. churning. Uh, you know what we want to do is uh, go back to our, our fella, our Cajun fella from Louisiana who grew up with hurricanes and the like, and he's experiencing his first, and I'll actually say it, my first as well. I think a lot of uh, us A lot are of us. It's a first, first time for all of us, a tsunami. He's been in Ventura watching the, the, the water level rise and fall, the waves increase. Uh, let's talk to you one more time. Dave. Yeah, in South Louisiana, we call it the lull of the hurricane. That is the point in which the hurricane blows in, and then it's almost silent. Uh, you look around, and the sun shines, and then the back end of that hurricane comes through, and sometimes the back end is the worst. What we're looking at right now, I would say, is the lull. An hour ago is when we saw the most dramatic picture. If we have that video, guys, if we can roll it. At one point, the water was literally sucked back from the shore, probably 500 yards off the shore into the sea. The water was just pulled back and we saw green as if we were looking at grass but where that grass was surfers had been surfing 10 minutes before and suddenly they were back out at sea wondering what was going on those were the effects of the tsunami the water being pulled back and then rushed back onto the shore you saw Alex Calder in Sky 5 describing what he was seeing offshore near the shore right now it looks like usual. Families are playing playing in the water. That green patch that we saw when the water had been sucked back has now been covered. It is business as usual. We have a school closure in the area. The beaches are open. But again, police are here. They're going up and down the promenade, visiting with residents, urging them, if they can, to stay out of the water. Again, we saw the effects. We could see them as the hours progress, even as late into the afternoon as 3 and 4 o'clock. We still have a warning in effect. That has not been changed for the California coast, so keep that in mind. Our buddy Gail Anderson in Orange County, the beaches are closed there. Here in Ventura County, they're open, but that doesn't mean you should come down. Be smart about it back to you. You made a very good point there is that um, the, the, the problem is not over. The alerts have not been issued. The warnings and the advisories have not been lifted. Um, we have seen that in Hawaii. They've actually lifted the warnings and some of the other Pacific uh, nations as well. They've lifted those warnings and advisories, right. but not here in California. And just because it seems quiet, what, pay attention to the advisories. Yeah, I mean, and I see people yeah, walking how, how, along, how, along the beach right behind you. Uh, just right along the yep. water there, as if, as if nothing's happening. Um, uh, how much curiosity has there been with people just wanting to come down and, and sort of watch what's going on to see what would happen? Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh, a lot of curiosity. I thought it was paparazzi at one point. There were dozens of people on top of parking garages, the top of the hotel, everyone coming out with their video camera or picture still camera to take a video of what we're seeing. And they're still here right now, walking up and down the beaches to see what might happen next. Back All right, you. David Begno, thank you so much for excellent reporting this morning for us. Thank you so much. Uh, we want to just recap and uh, take you back to our regularly scheduled programming here. But let's just do one more sort of recap of what has occurred at around 2.46 p.m. local time in Japan near the Sendai City area, an 8.9 magnitude, the largest uh, in over 100 years for that nation. They're saying the fifth most powerful earthquake in recorded history left. They're saying the death toll could be at least in the thousands. Yeah. There's many, many thousands of people who are missing. And of course, the quake triggered this massive tsunami, which... Uh, pushed around cars and buildings and debris and caused a whole lot of, uh, of damage and may be responsible for the most loss of life in Japan. It may not have been the quake, it may be the tsunami that turns out to be the real killer. And uh, of course we're going to have complete coverage on KTLA.com KTLA all day long, all afternoon long and also on our 1 o'clock news. Uh, right here uh, throughout the day as we continue to follow this major disaster. I'm Michaela Pereira alongside Eric Spillman uh, from all of our team here in the KTLA studios. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to tune in to our other broadcasts and of course KTLA.com. We return you now to regularly scheduled.
It's time for your Springer Sound Off, where you tell me what you're thinking. Is it more acceptable to be gay in America today than 20 years ago? Pick up the phone and call 888-JERRY-10. That's 888-537-7910 to tell me your final thoughts on today's big question. Plus, call now and receive exclusive offers. Are you calling yet? Call 888-JERRY-10. That's 888-537-7910. Is your life just like an episode of the Jerry Springer Show? And does everyone tell you you should be a guest? Well, if so, give us a call at 1-800-96-JERRY. To the one with the red button up, um, now that you know he, she's a man or he's a man, are you concerned that his is bigger than yours? Oh! <clears throat> that was never an issue at all, you know. <laughs> you know. Got a question for the uh, mom here. Uh, you think that gay, uh, being gay is a phase? Well, I got so, I got news for you. Uh, being a crappy mother isn't a phase either. Oh! I have a question for the cheerleader chaser in the back and his boyfriend. Oh, uh, what else do you guys do with that spirit stick? I have a question with the man with the red shirt. Uh, how did you not notice that she was actually a man? The lights was always off. And she <laughs> 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 